Hi guys, it's Joe here from Bulb Town Vlogs, and it's only two months till the next season of Evo Stick Football starts for Belper Town in the South East Division this year. Pre-season training starts on Saturday, I can't wait, it's going to be really exciting and I'm really looking forward to it as ever. But today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, something I've not tried before. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, I'm going to be tackling some of the wider issues around football. Some of them directly related to non-league football, some of them not. So I'll be interested to see if you enjoy it, let me know if you do or you don't or you want to do something different. As ever, these will just be my opinions that I'm giving on some of the uh, hot topics in football at the moment. And you can always agree or disagree. Comment down below with your opinions. You know, tweet me at JWHurst and we can get a bit of a debate going. But yeah, as ever, give a like if you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Share this with your friends and relatives. Turn notifications on, whatever that does. And yeah, without further ado, let's oh, get into this. Yeah, as we're talking about big issues in football, I think there's only really one place to start, really. It's the thing that's dividing the football community so much recently, and that is the issue of VAR. It's very divisive. Frank Lampard has said he wants it to be introduced in the Championship, whereas people like Danny Murphy and Jason Cundy have said that they don't want it as it's ruining the game of football. I do see both sides of it. I think when it's an objective decision, such as offside, where it's you're either on or offside, I think it's good. For example, you know, Sterling's goal in the quarter-final of the Champions League shouldn't have stood, and that allowed Spurs to rightfully progress in, in the competition. Equally, Lingard's goal in the Nations League, which was disallowed, also was the correct decision. So that shows where VR can be useful, like goal technology, when it's objective, you get it right, allows the better team to progress. However, if it's subjective, so just if it's a foul, I don't really agree with it, because it still relies on a human, and a human's making the decision, and one person's foul, maybe another person's fair tackle, so there's still that inconsistency there, which I don't think even every every angle of replays can address, so I think there's to be a more clear system to make sure we get the correct decision. And for me, I think the way we achieve that that clear system is, uh, I think we should, we should borrow something from cricket here, because cricket, if you watch it, you know, they have the review system where if a batsman's given out and they don't think they're out, they can review it. And equal if the uh, batsman's given not out and the fielding team think that he or she is out, they can review it. So I think that that could be used in football. For example, if it's a penalty and the attacker goes down in the box and a penalty is not given, but they feel it was a penalty, they could review it. So they could get an ang they could get VAR on it, have a look, and they they could see whether it was a penalty or not. And the clear bit was where you could use also use from cricket, you could use a hot spot. So you could show a little spike if the defender touched the attacker. You could show a little spike to show where the contact was, the exact place it was. And also the intensity of the spike could be how strong the challenge was. So it could be, you know, above this intensity, penalty, below it, no penalty. And I think that would be good. One wrong review per game, for example, so you don't use it every time. And I think also because it will cut out diving as well. Because if you think about it, if the attacker goes down, referee doesn't give it a penalty, but it's clear the attacker dived, they're not going to review it because it will waste their review and then it'll be obvious they've dived and then they'll be ashamed. And equally, if it's given a penalty, the defence reviews it and then VAR says no penalty, then the attacker will look stupid for diving and then they can get booked or whatever. So yeah, I think that'll be a good idea. Is it going to happen? I don't think so. But that will be my solution to the subjectivity part. Alright, so moving on, we are going to be continuing on the theme of decision making. We're going to be looking at referees and all the issues that surround them. You may get referees in non league level that aren't the best, with all due respect. We've definitely seen a few of those last season. I'm sure we'll see a few of them next season as well. It's just one of those things. But I think there are ways we can stop dissent in the game. I think everyone agrees that dissent is wrong because it'll put referees off refereeing and then we'll get left with worse quality officials and then the problem keeps going in a chicken and egg situation. I think there are ways we can stop dissent. I think it's a two-way thing. The players and the referees both have a role to play here. I'd say that the players, instead of you know being aggressive to the referees, you know shouting at them, saying "Oh, what are you doing?" sort of thing. Obviously, with a few more swear words than that, they could you know politely and quietly doing rugby like why 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 have you given that decision sort of thing? What have I done? As you often, you often hear Alex Patterson, he does that. He he asks the referee what have I done, and you know the, that gives the referee a chance to explain. So then you know the captain knows and the players know what the referee wants and they can change their game if they have to to you know suit the referee's needs as it were and so they know the consequences if they don't adapt their game to this and then equally that that means the referees do have to explain because you often as I'll go back to it when uh, Alex Astor is or what have I done uh, they are they just ignore him sometimes and that that seems really frustrating because he wants to know what he's done what, what his teammates have done 
but the referees aren't telling him, and then the problem just keeps going because we don't we don't know what's happened, what they've done wrong. So how are they supposed to correct that? So the problem just keeps going. So the referee should explain, oh yeah, I've given the foul because this that, and the other. I've not given it because this that, and the other. And then you know the referees and the play the players and captains, sorry, will say actually, yeah, this ref's going to let a lot go, or this ref's going to pull us up. So then they can you know they can adapt their game, not foul as much, you know, put a few more challenges in or whatever. And then they know the consequences of the not. That's not and right. So now we're going to move on to a system that's going to be brought in to uh, actually stop descent in a below step four. So it's not going to affect Belper, but it affects other teams, such as Gresley, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that is the Simbin system. That's going to be brought in below step four next season, I believe. This system is similar to rugby. It's where a player is booked, they will have to leave the pitch for 10 minutes and then come back on when they're waved on by the referee, like if they'd received medical treatment or whatever. So the team would have to play with 10 men for that period of time, giving them a disadvantage. And it gets crazy if there's a goalkeeper. Goalkeeper goes off, an outfield player has to go in goal, and the goalkeeper can only resume his goalkeeping position when there's a stoppage in play. So, you know, that is, is strange. I admit, when I first read it, I thought, oh, wow, what's happening here? But I think if you look at it, it is extreme. It will mean teams a disadvantage if they commit dissent, which will, you know, is a deterrent. It might stop dissent. Especially, you know, if teams do go down to 10 men and they concede a couple of goals, they might they might sit down and think, right, well, we can't do this now. Which I think will help. I think that may improve descent. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes in uh, Step 5 and Below. If you support one of those teams in Step 5 and Below, let me know what you think of it, because obviously it will affect you. So that'll be interesting to hear from you. Yeah, so now, a little bit off the subject of decision-making referees, but still a debate. It's the debate, should all teams enter the FA Cup at the same stage? Such as, you know, Man United right down to the bottom of the pyramid that compete in the FA Cup. They should all enter it back in August. In my opinion, they should, because I just think it'll be more exciting. It gives our, all the teams it's a level playing field. Uh, it, all teams have the same advantage. And it will be just, just imagine, like, you know, if a team got a Man City or a Liverpool, it'll be really big. It'll be a massive moment for their team. Their fans will remember it for years. One to tell the grandkids sort of thing the day we went to Anfield. And it will just be really exciting, I think, for the non-league. Uh, it will give the obviously the professional teams different experience to play on pitches that aren't up to standard, you know, have the small dressing rooms, all that sort of stuff. And the David versus Goliath scenario, it will bring more excitement. Everyone would know about the non-league more, you know, they get coverage, get the TV licensing, stuff like that, which would, you know, get more money into non-league football. And obviously, the, yeah, just get more money into non-league football, really. And the exposure, fans... Increased fans of non-league, you know, players get more airtime. So I should be really exciting. I think I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it'd be a really good chance because at the moment we've got to win something like five or six games to even get to play our League One side, which is you know seems a bit too much for me. Or they could just roll up and turn us over without having to do any work. So I think it'd be really exciting. Just see where it goes. Try it for a season. If we like it, great. If we don't, we don't. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be exciting. And yes, there we go. Those are my opinions on those four. Subjects as it were, obviously you're more than welcome to disagree, comment if you disagree with them, also comment if you agree with them, it's nice to know people agree with me. I mean, I'm sorry I used the word exciting a lot, I just couldn't think of anything else to say. And yeah, so that is it for me. It's something different, I've not done something like this before. Let me know if you enjoy it, or want me to do something different. I say pre-season starts on Saturday, pre-season training, I really can't wait, it's going to be really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, drop a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new. My name is Joe from Belltown Vlogs and I will talk to you in a while.